Hi there, welcome to another episode of V Beautiful. I'm Vanessa. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much for being a part of this beauty community. And if you're new here, I so appreciate you taking the time to check out this video and hang out with me for a little while. So I posted to my Facebook and Instagram and I asked, what would you like to see in an upcoming video? Like, do you want tips on application? Do you want product recommendations? Do you just kind of want some different ideas for looks? Like, what is it that you wanted? So thank you so much to those of you who answered the question, submitted what you would like to see, and I hope that you enjoy spending some time talking through all of our questions together. So first up, a Cameron 101 on Instagram said that she has really oily skin. So she was looking for a good foundation product to help kind of minimize that oily look that can creep in after, you know, a little while of wear. I have oily skin, so I can definitely identify with that. And so here's what I found that has worked pretty well for me thus far, and hopefully it'll work for you too. So we're gonna start with our primer, and I'm using the Lawless Beauty Set the Stage Hydrating Priming Serum. Now, a hydrating primer to me is key because when we start to really mattify everything, to start with like our most matte base and most matte foundation. I think when I use a primer that's not as hydrating, my skin starts to look like a little too dry, like a little too matte. And so I feel like this is the one step where I do like to go with something that is not matte a lot of the time, um, so it's not overdone. And this primer has like a really nice, like jelly, like almost texture. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it all over. Now it's very important, at least to me, that you give your primer a chance to like set in, to relax, to settle. Sometimes if you're putting on foundation too quickly after your primer, then that may be where you feel like you're getting oily or where you feel like your foundation isn't going on the way that you want it to. So I like to give it a couple beats before I start applying anything else to make sure that it's absorbed into my skin. Give it a little time to relax, to settle in, before you move on to the next step. So our next step is also with Lawless Beauty. This is something that I've been doing for a while. If I really need my makeup to last or if I really want it to be matte, I'll put on setting powder before I apply the foundation. Mm -hmm. You're gonna put your setting powder on, then your foundation. This is the Seal the Deal Loose Setting Powder from Lawless Beauty, and it is a translucent powder. Now, here's the thing. Because we're applying this before our foundation, you want to do like a nicely sort of like thinly buffed layer. You don't want to lay it on too thick because then it's going to have the opposite result. It's gonna like kind of make your foundation a little too sticky, a little too cakey. You're really just dusting a light layer. So I've got some on my brush. That's about how much I'm using. And I'm just going to go ahead and just lightly buff it into my skin. And I will show you sort of one half of my face done with the powder and the other not done. So you can see just like, even if it was maybe a no makeup day, how it will help take down the shine. And so that's why we're doing it before our foundation because it's gonna give us our most matte base to start with. You see the difference, like just from the powder, like here where I have shine, you don't notice as much here. Like if I turn here, where we would put our highlighter usually, you see the shine. Here, you're not seeing as much shine. So that's what I mean by starting with our most matte base. You wanna get off to a good start. So I'm gonna do the other side of my face so they can match and then we can apply our foundation. So for our foundation, I'm using the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation, and I wear shade 5W2, which is Rich Caramel. To me, this is a really good matte foundation. It's not too, too matte where your skin starts to look flat, 
but I think it does a good job with controlling some of the shine so you don't have that like really shiny look sometimes. If you have oily skin, you know what I'm talking about. And also it's really long wearing. So if that's something that is important to you, this is um, a long wear stay in place foundation as it says on the bottle. I think it's a good one, especially if you're looking to control the oil. So I always like to apply a little bit onto my little mixing palette. And I will actually start a lot of times with like one or two pumps because you can always work up from there. And then that way you're not wasting foundation because I mean, foundation is not cheap and we don't want to waste it. So start with a little bit, build from there versus like pumping out four or five pumps and then you've got so much left that you're not using. Now because we started with the setting powder, when we apply the foundation, we're actually just going to kind of press it into the skin. So we're gonna work it into the skin that way um, versus doing like sweeping motions because then it's gonna be like picking up the powder too. So I like to press it in um, and you'll see what I mean when we start applying it. So that's one pump. I'll definitely do another pump to cover this side and I might do a third to kind of go over any areas where I need more coverage. But again, we're really just pressing this into the skin so that it is kind of getting into the powder, getting onto the skin, but they're not commingling too much. Like we're not really mixing them together, if that makes sense. And don't forget to take it down a little bit so that your neck and your face match. Now, if you're happy with the coverage, you can leave it here. If there's any other areas where you feel like you might need a little extra, I would just take like a half a pump and then apply it a little bit more, just tap it into those areas. So I get like a little more coverage on my cheek. So I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more, just tapping it in. And I'm just lightly tapping again because we don't really want it to take up too much of that powder that we lay down or else it defeats the purpose. So now from here, it depends on like what you want to do next. So I won't do like a full face tutorial because like you may just only wear a little bit of blush. You may like to contour. Um, you may like highlighter, you may not like highlighter. So whatever you're going to do from this point on, like that's fine, but then make sure that after you've got all of your cream, like anything liquidy, so any cream blush, cream bronzer, liquid products, that you then go back in with your setting powder and set them again and then finish with your setting spray. To me, the setting spray doesn't matter as much um, if you're using one that's like oil control or mattifying. To me, that hasn't really made that much of a difference, but definitely the powder before the foundation and the powder again after everything um, is done helps me kind of control the oil a little more. And if you're worried about looking too matte, so if after you put on your last step of powder, you're like, whoa, 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 like I look too, I need, I look too like a doll piece of paper. <laughs> then you can go ahead in with a little highlighter um, or products that have a little bit of a glow to them. So anything that has any like shimmer or sheen, and that's how you can add that back in without it looking like oily or greasy. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of my face because our last questions have to do with eyeshadow look, eyeshadow technique, and eyelashes. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, now it's time for eyeshadow, but before we do eyeshadow, I realized I should have mentioned with our foundation, before you apply your primer, you wanna make sure your skin is as clean and dry as possible. Sometimes, sometimes, it could be like your serums, your treatments, whatever you're using in your skincare routine that is causing that like oily look over time. So if I'm really concerned about being matte, I definitely make sure I like have my skin very clean, very dry, nothing on it before I put the primer on and that helps too. So Linda on Facebook, along with Troys and Berries on Instagram, asked about eyeshadows, like what are some good 
palettes to use, what are some good looks. The Bougie Diva on Instagram asked about eyeshadow products as well, but also about application. And Shu says, asked about eyeshadow blending techniques. So lots of eyeshadow questions. I actually had a purple smoky eye look when I did the video asking for questions. And um, a good amount of you were like, how did you do that? Like, can we talk about that look? So I've recreated here on this side. We're gonna work on this side. And the great thing about this is like, while it may look kind of complicated, it is really one of the most easy glam looks that you could do. So I figured since it's getting a holiday, we definitely could do like a little glam look and easy glam, like what's better than that? So we're gonna start with the Laura Geller Kajal Eyeliner and this is the color Deep Black. And I like this one as a base because look at how thick that eyeliner pencil is. So if you are using it as an all over color, then it's really great because you can just cover a large area at one time. Usually, y'all know, I start with eyeshadow primer. However, because we're starting with an eyeliner all over and this one wears pretty nicely, we're not gonna do primer. Sometimes I feel like if I do like eyeliner all over my eye on top of primer, it it doesn't like blend out for me the way that I want it to. So that's why I go with no primer. And keep in mind that while we're using black, if you wanted a less dramatic eye, you could absolutely use brown. You could use purple, blue, whatever colors you want to, you can kind of like mix and match them into this technique, um, but the technique will be the same. Just the color you choose will be yours. So we're gonna apply this all over the eyelid. And we're also gonna go like slightly above the crease. So you'll just wanna look straight ahead and just above that fold, that's where you're gonna go. And now we're gonna take a fluffy, a fluffy brush and just lightly blend this. So I'm using the Lawless Beauty, the Glam One palette. This has six eyeshadow shades in there. You've got black, you've got brown, sort of like a, like a peachy kind of color, six matte shades, and then you have two that are shimmer shades. One is a foiled champagne and one is a foiled pink. So we're gonna go in with a fluffy brush. We're gonna pick up some of the black and we're gonna use that to start to blend out that eyeshadow we laid down even further. So you start with a little bit and then you can always add more as needed. And I'm also gonna lay down a little on top of the eyeshadow and just kind of like how setting powder works for us, that's just gonna help set the, eye, the eyeliner that we've put down first. follow the same steps for our lower lash line. Now on the lower lash line, I have to go in with a little touch of brown just to soften the blackout. So I'm just gonna go in with this dark brown shade here at the bottom. So as you're blending, start with a little. If you don't have the one you want, add a touch more and keep adding just a little bit more until you get the look that you're going for because it's easier to add than it is to take away. So now we're gonna use a built-in tool, our finger, and we're gonna pick up the pink shade. And that's what we're gonna use all over the lid. And we're just gonna apply that right on top of the black. I like the way that the foils in this palette apply with a finger. That's another tip. If you're working with like shimmers or foils and you're working with a brush and you feel like you're not getting the impact, maybe you're getting a lot of fallout, they're not really working for you, try your finger. Because sometimes shades like this, for whatever reason, the brush 
just doesn't like them. And so your finger will work a lot better. Now we're gonna go in with a little brush and just kind of blend in the edges of that pink, um, especially like where our finger couldn't really get to. So I'm just gonna pick up a little bit wherever I feel like I need a little bit more with my brush and then just go ahead and smooth it out. I actually feel like I could use a little bit more on this side. And we're basically done. See what I mean? Like it's very glam, but also like really easy to do, which I love glam, I love easy. So we're gonna go in with the champagne shade and we're just gonna use that in the center of the lid. It's gonna be like a bit of a highlight and it just gives a little bit more dimension there. And I'm just using my finger and tapping it in the center. And that's it. I just love how it comes out and that's easy to do. So Teresa on Facebook asked about eyelashes, especially for people who maybe you don't wear them all the time, but with holidays coming up, you do want to try a lash. And so here are some tips and tricks for applying lashes. First, you're going to start with your mascara. Um, I feel like this is like a Lawless Beauty hour almost, but I'm using um, the Lawless Beauty One and Done Mascara. I mean... Why not? Because we did the eyeshadow, so we may as well use the mascara. So I just do a little thin coat on my top lashes because obviously, oh no, I got a little on my nose. Obviously we're going to be putting lashes on, so you don't need to really overdo it, but you do want to make sure that you have a little layer on your natural lashes so that the false lashes will blend in. And then we're just going to go ahead and do the bottom lashes too. I do like to get a good coat on my bottom because I want them to not look like wimpy compared to the top. So we're going to be using Velour Lashes and the style is Wispy Me Away. And I like these because the band is thin. So if you're new to applying lashes, hopefully um, that helps you sometimes when the band is too stiff, it's hard to maneuver them around. So I do like that these have a nice thin band and they give you length but they're not so long. And so I feel like if you're new to lashes, the first time you put them on, sometimes it's like, whoa, it's a lot. So this is a good place to start because they're not too, too long. You will probably, well, I, depending on the size of your eye, you may need to cut them. When you cut a lash, you want to cut from the outer corner. So if you need to adjust them in any way to be able to fit your eye better, you want to cut from the side that's going to be on the outer corner of your eye. You do not want to cut from the inner corner because those ones need to be shorter there to make them look more natural. So if you cut from that part, then you're going to have lashes that start really long and it's not going to blend as seamlessly with your own lashes. See where I'm going? Okay, so you want to apply a thin layer of glue and you wanna make sure you get all the way across the band. So if you've ever had them lifting in the corners, you probably didn't apply enough glue to the edges. So you really wanna make sure you get edge to edge. And I even like to put a little bit on the inner portion of the band just to make sure that I have a nice bond when I stick them on. Here's how they look with the glue on. Try and turn so you can see it all the way. The glue I use dries clear. It goes on sort of like bluish, so as it begins to look more clear, that's how you know that it's drying. You do wanna wait like, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 seconds before you start putting them on because if the glue is too wet, they're gonna be sliding around and it's gonna be hard to put them where you want them. So you wanna make sure that the glue is a little bit dry and also hold your mirror at an angle where you're looking down because when you're looking down, then you can see your whole lash line. So that makes it easier to apply them rather than looking straight on. And then you're just going to lightly lay them onto your lash line and then just go ahead and gently press them in. And then go across with little presses just so that you have it glued down everywhere. And you can see my glue was still a little wet um, because that corner came up a little bit, but I just pressed it back down. And so as it's drying, you wanna just keep pushing them in. 
and just very lightly, like you don't need to press hard, just very lightly so that all the way across that lash is bonding. Now from here, once they're on, if you want a little more drama, you could always apply some mascara to your lashes. If you like them the way that they are, then I just like to give a little press with the lash and my lash just to kind of press them together. And these lashes are reusable. So if you are thinking like, you know, I do want a lash, but I don't wear lashes that often. Like a pair like this, you can get them, wear them on like Christmas, clean the glue off, wear them on New Year's Eve, clean the glue off, and then maybe you're going to wear them again on Valentine's Day. So without like, you know, unless you're wearing them every day, you wouldn't need to replace them sooner. But if you're only wearing them on special occasions, they could last you a pretty good while. And I always like to keep the case because it's a good place to store them. So I'll just put them back in here and then slide the cover over and now they're nice and secure. And they're also protected from like any dust or dirt or anything. And that's it, we're done. This is the final look. Lashes, eyeshadow, matte foundation and all. That does it for this episode. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I so appreciate everyone who sent in questions. Um, they were some good beauty thought starters and I think that I may need to do this again and see what else that we can learn with each other. I'm Vanessa. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. There will be new videos in the The Beautiful series coming your way. And I will see you next time. Bye.